Hallelujah. But, and I, I begin to think, I said, well, how many Islamic people, Muslim people, do you see yeah. making fun of their faith, yeah. making fun of their yeah. teachers and, yeah. and, 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 and imams, praise God? Yeah. How, how, how many, amen, people that follow Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam, how many of them do you see them yeah. mocking him and how he talks and how he dresses? How, yeah. how many uh, of the Jewish people do you see mocking their faith and, and, and various different religions of the world? They don't mock their faith and they don't allow you to mock their faith. In fact, praise God, you try to mock a Muslim's faith and talk about Muhammad and, 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 and talk about Allah, amen, they'll blow you up. Boom, that's your answer, praise God. Hallelujah, that's why Trump got to be careful where he is right now because them folk don't play. Them folk will let their whole country be blown up to prove a point that we believe in what we believe in. Y'all quite yet, amen. We of the Christian faith, we 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 praise the Lord, scoff at our leaders, we mock our pastors, and we mock our teachers and the mothers of the church. We mock the faith that was so amen seriously delivered. Do you know how many people died to get you, amen, this word of God that you casually hold in your hand that you only read on the spur of the moment. How many of you realize that the word of God was not always, amen, available to you, praise God. You had to go to church and listen at the preacher preaching and then whatever they interpreted, that's what you got understood. Praise God. Y'all ain't understanding me. Praise God till one, amen, praise God and the boys looked at one of the priests because he's trying to get the, the, the Bible interpreted in all kinds of the language, praise the Lord. He, he, the priest looks at him and says, you know, people can't understand the scripture. They need us. And he looked at him and he told him and said, listen, he said, I'm going to praise God and make sure that the scripture is so widely known that the plowboy is going to know more scripture than you. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Praise God. He's burnt at the stake by the king of England. Huh? For printing hallelujah, the Bible to give to you. Mm. They die, die. beheaded, crucified for us to allow sinners to mock that worthy name. Do you know what it was like to be at the altar seeking God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and to receive the power of God on the inside? And we gonna mock that and let folk mock it, and we laugh at it because it's the end thing, and, and, and you won't say nothing about it because you won't you you know folk you don't want them to say well you being too deep now now you be you got to laugh sometimes yeah laughter is good for the soul but laugh at something that's funny and not something that is sacred. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The, the Medeals and the Tyler Perry brought in that mocking of the church. Brought it in, praise God. And every amen movie that they make about the church has no reverence for God. It's mocking us and making us all look like we're a bunch of hypocrites that don't know how to keep our pants zipped up. And, and, and all we doing is running out the money, praise God. And we're watching that child, praise God. Get back home to watch what that green, green, green leaf. Green, green leaf. <laughs> That's right. And we are so in love with drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, we, are. we don't even want to watch nothing about God if there ain't no drama in it. better than y'all say Wonder why. We can't reach a lost world because there is no difference between our life and their life. They, praise the Lord, don't believe in God, but we live like we don't believe in God. And the sad part about it is those of you that have been exposed to the Bible and have been exposed to the truth of God's word, you are not going to escape. But the Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great of a salvation? If the righteous scarcely make it, where shall the sinner and ungodly appear? Out of all of your living right, out of all of your singing and serving God, you're just going to scarcely get in. It's just going to be by God's amazing grace that you make it into.
into the kingdom of God. And if you know that it is that narrow, praise God, why did you find so much time to allow people to, amen, blaspheme that worthy name by which you were called? Amen. In one breath, they say God is good. After they cuss somebody out. Yes. And they say, child, I'm praying this in God here. After they done cuss <laughs> somebody out. Yes. The sad part about it is, children, that it is so common now yes. that they don't see nothing wrong with it. Yes. And we don't have no Christians living holy enough to be able to say that there is a problem. Yes. Y'all quiet. Yes. Everybody want to make like that nobody is living right. Yeah. Everybody is, you know, yeah. down low. Got something that you're trying to hide. Yeah. I'm preaching better than yeah. yeah. huh? We allow the truth of God to be evil spoken of. So the Bible says, praise the Lord, that in the last days that there are going to be scuffers. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And what they're going to be saying, Sister Chanel, they're going to be saying, Pray the Lord, where is the promise of his coming? Yeah. Amen. In other words, because, amen, the Lord has been tarrying so long, they begin to doubt that Jesus is coming back. Yeah. They say, you, you keep saying that Jesus is coming back, but I, I heard that ever since I was a boy. And I heard that my grandmama, she heard that. And ever since the time of beginning, things are the same way as it was. And so because of that, they say, hallelujah, you're believing in a myth and you're believing in a fable. Praise God. And so some people take, amen, the long suffering of God. Amen. They take it, praise the Lord, like God is not going to do what he said. How, how many understand that God taking his time coming back is his love and his patience and mercy for you? The Bible says he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of repentance. The reason why Jesus ain't come back yet because you ain't ready, praise God. The reason Jesus ain't come back yet because there's still a mama praying for her child somewhere. Knowing that if Jesus were to show up this moment, that they would go to hell. I want you to understand that everybody that died don't go to heaven. Some people actually die and go to hell. Praise Lord. And some people that go to church die and go to hell. Don't think that because you go to church that you are immune from hell. Going to church, amen, only makes you more responsible for the thing that you heard. I heard the Bible say that we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we should let them slip at any time. Sometimes we as people, we are forgetful, amen, of the things that have been placed on the inside of us. We are forgetful of the truth of God's word that has been brought to us. And we begin sometimes to forget what God brought us out of. But Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. Something, amen, that you did for me, brought me out, left an imprint on my soul. Hallelujah, that I will sing your praises throughout eternity. They come hell or high water, I got a mind to live right every day. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. 
because I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Let me put me I'm grateful. They So my praise and my worship that not just begin when I'm at church. Yes. It encompasses my whole life. Yeah. Bible says that these false people promise deliverance while they're living in bondage to the flesh. Yeah. Said so they promise deliverance. And they are in bondage to their own sin. Say that. Amen. They're, 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 they're preachers that come hear me because God wants to deliver you when they themselves have a problem with their own flesh. Amen. Say amen. amen. Sometimes some of these jokers are so full of lust that you don't know if they want you because they, 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 they want your soul saved or whether they want your body taken care of. Y'all quiet, but I'm telling you the truth. Hallelujah. And, and, and they have no character. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. amen. They have no character, praise the Lord. They, 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 lose. they got no character. Jesus, Jesus said, ye shall know them by their fruit. He didn't say worry about what they prophesy. Because they can prophesy and they can sing and, and they can speak in tongues and they can even perform some miracles, praise God. But if you allow that to be the measuring rod and stand about what you think somebody is true, you will be fooled in these last days. He said, you shall know them by their fruit. Fruit. How are they living? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Peter said, I, I don't want you to be fooled by these last day deceivers. I, I don't want you to be fooled because they got a lot of pomp and splendor. And they got a, a lot, praise God, of hype going on with them. Praise God. They have trained themselves to have a sound that, that sounds like, you know, where you come from. But whenever you have been planted by the power of God, and when God has done something inside of you, it don't matter what kind of sound people make. If there's something that's not right about it, there's something inside of you to say, yeah, it sounds pretty good, but something is missing. Have you ever heard a preacher preach and they sound good? And they're placing their words the right way. But something is just missing. There's just not a connection somewhere. The same thing is really singing and she can hit those octaves and go, but something is missing. The music is playing and they got all the latest sounds and all the latest praise, but there's something missing in the music department. Yes, God, I feel like preaching. Oh, good God. We got any and everything playing on our music today. Trying to make sounds in the church. Because you want music in the church, you will hire a fornicator. And you will hire literally a homemonger. A man to play on your music. And to sing in your choir. And to sing on your praise Because it sounds good.
Yeah. And an apostle of Jesus Christ. Uh huh. To them that have obtained. Uh huh. My precious faith. Is that chapter two? Two. Uh huh. But there were false prophets. Yes, yeah. Read it. But there were false prophets. But there were false prophets. Also among the people. Among the people. Listen. When God brought them out of Israel. The Bible calls and says that there was a mixed multitude. Everybody that came out of Egypt was not Israel. Amen. Let me help you understand that just because God bring you out of something, don't mean, praise the Lord, that Satan ain't going to tag along. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Whenever, praise the Lord, God do a work, Satan will also try to do a work to counterfeit it so it can confuse the unstable-minded people. You have the real Holy Ghost, you got counterfeit Holy Ghost. You got real churches, you got counterfeit churches. You got real praise, you got counterfeit praise. Wherever you have that is real, that is also the opposite that ain't right. Amen. Are y'all hearing me today? Oh yeah, hallelujah. So he said, pray the Lord, there was false prophets in those days. But then he didn't stop right there. What else he say, son? Among the people. Uh-huh. That there shall be false teachers among them. There are going to be false teachers among you. Listen. Who privilege shall bring in down of a hearsay. Privately. Privilege means they sneak, they sneak you with it. Ellen McCoy, they sneak you with it. You can always tell a wolf. A wolf don't never come in at the door. Uh -huh. uh, a wolf, amen, always wants to come behind. A wolf disagree with how things are carried out in the church and rather than coming to whoever the shepherd of the house is, the wolf get a hold of members and the wolf invite folk to dinner and the wolf praise God, hallelujah, give gifts and presents and the reason why they do that is so that they can gain influence with the ears of the people. The Bible said they privately come in. I know what the pastor said, but I feel in my spirit But you won't ever ever go to the man of God because you got a snake spirit and a snake spirit praise God a snake can be sitting right amongst you and you can't see it because he is so well camouflaged until he make a move and when he make a move then you know it ain't nothing but a snake the Bible said that these false teachers these false prophets are going to come in privately and bring in hallelujah damnable doctrines and heresy they're going to tell you it's all right to tattoo your body it's all right. You know, God don't care. Hallelujah about that kind of stuff. God just looking at your heart. And when they say stuff like that, you we have to love both and not judge. When they say stuff like that, they, what they're trying to do, they're trying to tie the hand of the preacher so that he can't preach against sin. Because they love an atmosphere full of sin. Oh, but when you got a hole in this preacher, Well, I've been down so low that I ain't had no money. I've had nothing. 
word is right here. Yes. 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 What else is that? You agree, huh? Come on. I feel good. <laughs> There should be false teachers among you. I try. I tell you, I try. Yeah. I try to be nice. Uh -huh. I try to be understanding. Uh -huh. I try it all. Yeah. I try to be a counselor. Uh -huh. I try. Probably well, maybe if we make our services a little earlier uh -huh. and don't yeah. don't keep the people in so long. Yeah. Right. Right. Maybe, you know, it'll get better. You know what I found out? You know what I found out about people? People don't come to church because they don't want God. All them other stuff, we can put it on it, but all it is is an excuse. People do what they want. I was, I was looking at a news article. An article was stating how the preachers were angry because Wake County is allowing a man the, the commencement to be during the time that normal church service had. Yeah, and, and, and you know, being a pastor, that was a legitimate concern for me. Amen. Because you know, when Boo Boo is graduating, everybody <laughs> going to be right? yeah. 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 And instead of hearing people, I, you know, I, I looked to see one supportive comment for the preacher. There was no support of God. Oh, wow. It ain't but one Sunday. Oh, my. Rev doesn't worry about missing them ties and all. Yeah. Yeah. There used to be a time where coming to church yeah. and being oh, holy was such a sacred thing right. that the preacher didn't even have to defend himself. He did. Somebody yeah. defended him yeah. because they knew that holiness was right. Yeah. It's so right, yeah. praise the Lord. That on Sunday they won't even let you buy liquor and man before twelve. It's just so quick. They're trying to repeal that law so that you can buy liquor anytime. Go to see what's happening, children. Don't you see that the world is getting stronger and stronger? And it's just ready to answer questions, get ready to take over. Don't you see that?
But I'm talking about the same thing. That they received on the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place with one.
they would give what you call a dowry, which was a great song, which showed that you were able to take care of this woman. Today, it's what we consider the equivalent of an engagement ring. That engagement ring said, with that diamond on it, that engagement ring said, this is mine, and I intend to take her to the altar, and I intend to make her mine. Well, children, on the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, Jesus came in, and he engaged himself. And how did he do it? He gave me the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the earnest, the down payment of what God planned to do throughout eternity. So right now, you are the bride of Christ. But one of these days, one of these days, hallelujah, the marriage feast of the land is going to take place. And I'm going to move from being a bride to being a wife. Bryson could tell you that it would be more believable. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
when you both get away, they fall out before they even hear what the preacher says. Yeah. 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 Great Jesus. Praise yeah. yeah. God. Amen. Huh? Amen. He said they will have the spirit of Balaam. Yeah. You know who Balaam was? Uh -huh. yeah. Whoever Balaam cursed will curse. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever he blessed yeah. will bless. Yeah. Balak, the son of Baal, said, I, I, I got to curse these folks. Yeah. Because these folks are blessed folk. They eating up all the grass around here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go hire one of them false prophets, one of them witch doctors. I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Go to Jamaica. Go find somebody down in the woods somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Listen, if you got to go see somebody and pay somebody some money to get somebody to do what you need to do. Even though they got all these crosses around their house, got all these Bibles and scriptures written on every door, yeah. every mirror, yeah. that's a sign you got a witch in your house. Yeah. 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 Witches are very religious. Yes, they are. Very yeah. religious. Y'all quiet. In yes. Catholicism, there's a lot of witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. People don't know it. And the Pentecostals are coming, becoming just as worse. Yes, they are. Yeah. Y'all quiet, but I know I'm telling you. Yeah. Have a good life. Huh? Anytime you got to fast to make somebody do something that they would not do in their own power, you are engaging in witchcraft. Right. Yeah, like it is. Amen. You don't fast to control people. Right. You don't fast to control churches. That's right. You don't fast so that people can die. Amen. That's right. Ah, right. Scott, he holding up the progress of the church. We gonna fast that God move. Right. You ain't no little they witch, a warlock. That's right. I promise you, if you fast for me to die, yeah. <laughs> keep, keep your insurance paid. Right. 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 I'm just gonna be honest with you. Keep it keep paid. Yes. Keep it paid. Yes. I might get sick, but I'm going to come back up. Yes, sir. Yes. The, book said, the book didn't say that the weapon wouldn't form. Yes. He said they were right. form it, but it wouldn't prosper. Right. Ain't that right? That's right. My right. God, he might get sick as a dog for three days. Yes. That's but you coming up out of it. Yes. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh my. 
Young Clyde. Yeah, like it is. You got a trick folk to give? Uh-huh, true. If you ain't a give in the heart, you ain't gonna give That's right. That's right. That's right. And if you give, cause you think you're gonna get a blessing, uh-huh. you praise God. Yes. Amen. How y'all hearing me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me hear if you get through here. <laughs> the Apostle Peter described the acts of judgment from God at different times in history. Come on, somebody. Amen. In hopes that we would understand the seriousness of God's wrath. I want you to understand something. How many of you know God is loving? Oh, yeah. Amen. He's loving. I know He's loving. How many know He's a protector? Oh, yeah. And a provider? Amen. And a way that He's all those things. Yeah. But how many also know that God is just? Oh, yeah. Just. And He is holy. Yeah. Which means His holiness and his justice demands that all unrighteousness yes. be dealt with. Amen. If all God was just a good, nice God, then folk could do what they want to do yeah. and not worry. And these preachers today want you to believe that. You know, a message like what I'm preaching today, they say, well, if you preach like that, people don't want to be beat over the head to be saved. Amen. I'm not beating you over the head. You live in such a screwed up society that they don't understand what real love is. Uh-huh. They think that real love is letting you go on in your way yeah. and not correct you. Yeah. That's not love. Amen. Uh, Amen. A mother's love is unconditional. That's right. Yeah. She got unconditional love. And she got a right to hook that'll put you in your face. Yeah. 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 A mother loves you, but she'll beat you. Yes. Oh. When you're raising your children, my mama's my best friend. You must not be doing something right. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Because when I'm raising, I ain't got time to be your friend. Right. Right. Maybe we'll be friends later, but right now you're my friend. Yeah. Yeah. You People are messed up about what they think about love. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I disagree with your lifestyle means that I don't love you. No, it means I love you enough to tell you what you do. Do you know men and women are so jacked up today they look just like each other? Amen. I went in the store this morning and I saw a name tag on a guy. It looked like a guy. It's a girl. And, 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 and you look like a guy. And I said, and I said, is that your name? I almost got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife informed me, it was, it was, I've been going to that store for, I don't know, and every time I see him, he looked like a little boy. Wow. And she said, it's, 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 I thought he had his name tag switched. Maybe he got up that morning and forgot his name tag. <laughs> you know, people do that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, Switch yeah. name tags for the baby, you know. Oh, yeah. But he looked, it was a she, she said. And so I was like, really? I said, okay, well, have a good day. I kept, I kept the conversation moving. I said, no, I could have gotten some really deep, 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 deep trouble. Because folk don't want you to bother seeing. God put a separation between male and female. Oh, yeah. A woman's supposed to look like a woman. Yeah. And a man's supposed to look like a man. And anytime we confuse it and let it go in to one another, we are committing an abomination. Yeah. And the sad part about it, that stuff used to be named in the world amongst folk that didn't know about. Oh, yeah. But now in the church, oh, yeah. you got folk talking about they don't know. They transgendered, whatever that is. Bible said God created both male and female. And female. Yeah. That transgender by how it comes. That's a man-made gender. Yeah. That's right. You ain't no trans. And, and in fact, if you think you are between male and female, I, I suggest you either have a demon or you need some medicine because something is wrong with you. Yeah. And you have to tell the truth to people and you got to tell it in love. I don't hate you, but what you're doing is going to cause you to be lost. Amen. Amen. Y'all quiet. Oh, yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Great so you don't hate folks. I hate you. No, you you ain't bad for coming. Come on in the church. Yeah. We've had we've had woman and their lovers come right here to church. Yeah. And you can't come to church. You, you can't sing in the choir. Ah. The whole position. You come. Yeah. We gonna love. Amen. And we gonna treat you good. Come on, somebody. Amen. And if you're hungry, we're going to feed you. Yeah. And if you're naked, we're going to clothe. We might give you some clothes that look like your gender. Yeah. Amen. We're going to take care of you Amen. and love on you. Amen. But the powers that be and of this world's agenda are trying to push their agenda so bad yeah. that they make preaching like this. They say it's hate preaching. Uh -huh. Let me tell you who hates you the most. The man that know that you're about to be lost and don't say Amen. Hallelujah. Know that you, if you know your child is doing something wrong, have incorrect behavior, yeah. and you don't correct that behavior, uh -huh. you don't love that child. Amen. If I'm a pastor that got them that don't do what's right, if they got incorrect behavior, he's supposed to correct them. You correct them. You ain't supposed to be afraid to correct somebody. That's if they right. doing something that ain't right, you supposed to tell them. That's that. right. And 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 and, and gone is the day that you got to bring everybody in the office. <laughs> if you act up in the pub, uh -huh. then you get God in the pub. Right. If you act up privately, yeah. then I might could just you know. Just burn, you know. The Bible said, "Them that sin rebuke before all, that others may fear." We're trying to do it the way of the world because we're trying to spare feelings. Amen. And God is not concerned about your feelings. He wants your soul to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. I need to finish this. Give me just a couple minutes. I'm going to wrap it up. I don't want to lose my arms with God. The Apostle Peter <laughs> described the acts of judgment from God at different times in history in hopes that we would understand the seriousness of God's will. And he describes at least three judgments. He brought them out. Number one, he talked about the judgment of the angels. The angels who left their first estate and followed Satan. The Bible says, if God spared not the angels, he created the angels perfect, whole, and sinless. And what he wanted to show you, it doesn't matter how high you are, sin will bring you down. Amen. I mean, in heaven, and sin brought you out of heaven. How high you are, or how spiritually you think you are, if you are engaged in sin, it'll bring you down. Are you here? He talked about Noah. I call him the preacher of righteousness. Come on. Amen. And the Bible said that he was, praise the Lord, the eighth in the ark. I mean, everybody else got in there. He was the last one. Wouldn't have been something with the door shut without no evidence. Hallelujah. He built the ark. And he was the last. He was the eighth. Read sometimes. You see what I'm talking about? Sometimes we preach it. The Bible says that we receive the greater condemnation. Great Huh? If you a preacher, you ain't got no business flirting with the lady. That's right. If you a preacher, you ain't got no business in some woman's inbox trying to get a date. I know that's right. I'm preaching better than y'all saying. You ain't got no wife. Great God. You need to consult God speaking for a wife. Pray the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Young fellas, great job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bob says, better to marry than to burn. If I'm on Facebook at 3 o'clock in the morning, inboxing you, trying to get pictures from you, and prophesying to you, that's a sign. 
might not be what I'm supposed to be. In fact, I'm not what I'm supposed to be. Run. I can't trust you around my wife. You need to be at the altar. Man. The office of a preacher holds great respect. Y'all quiet? Go ahead. Great respect. The children should feel comfortable around you. The mothers and the sisters should feel comfortable around you. should not feel like a pair of eyes. Amen. <laughs> Y'all quiet. Noah built the ark. And, and the Bible says, praise the Lord, while the ark was in preparing, the people said that it's not going to rain. Where is the sign of this coming? It's been the same way since the beginning of the day. Till that day Noah went in the ark. And the world that was in and out of water was destroyed by that same thing. What does that tell you? What does the story of Noah tell you? It tells that even though it may be a long time coming, yeah. a change will come. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even though it looked like you ain't going to get what you deserve, if you don't change, God going to get you. Amen. That's right. I'm closing and the last place he dealt with, he dealt with Simon and Gomorrah. The Bible teaches us in 2 Peter that Lot was vexed with the filthy conversation of the people. He was a righteous man living amongst unrighteous people. Amen. Amen. God said, I'm coming down. I'm going to see. Stop these people. See what they're doing. See it so. Got the lot. Said, Lot! We're getting ready to destroy the city. He said, Take you and your family and leave. Don't look back. Head for the hills. Huh? The Bible said that. Somehow, Lot was being slow. He was lingering. lingering. Read it. You read it. You read it. Amen. Amen. And he was lingering. He, meaning that this was a serious situation, but he was dragging his foot. Being, you know, you know, when it's time to go, and the horn, the horn them beeped outside. You got to go back to the bathroom and find that one. Yeah. See, Lot was lingering, like some of us are today. Lingering. Yeah. You ain't serious about your salvation. Legal. You're on the fence post. Yeah. And the Bible said the angel grabbed Lot. Said, escape with your life because he was merciful. The Bible said the Lord being merciful. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened to As they were going, the Bible said Lot's wife looked back. Yeah. And she was turned to a pillow of salt. Amen. She turned into this a, a statue of salt. She perished. Because she looked back. She did what God told her not to do. When you don't know how to obey God, you will perish. If you be willing and obedient, you should be the good. But if you refuse to rebel, you shall be the power. So what am I, what, what does the story of Lot tell you? The story of Lot tells you, don't look back. God brought you out of darkness. God brought you out of sin. Don't look back for that. Sometimes some of us get saved. Thank you, Some of us decide that we're going to give the Lord our 